A story? Sure, I would be glad to tell you a story. Tell me, do you have a pet of some kind? You do? Then I know you will like this first story called The Sting of Death. Billy and Betty live on a little farm in Nebraska. They have to work very hard to help Mother run the place, for their father is dead. They are poor, and so he have none of the nice toys to play with like some of us do. The most precious possession Betty owns is a little ragged doll, which she nurses very tenderly, for it is crippled. One of its tiny arms is gone. But she loves it just as much as the most beautiful doll in all the world. The only toy Billy has is a black and white dog, and his dog is really more than a toy. It is also his very best friend, and everywhere that Billy goes, that dog is sure to go. The dog's name is Spot. In spite of being so poor, the story of their lives has been a happy one up until this very moment. But right at this minute, the finger of death is pointing at their little family circle. And the sad thing about it is, they do not know it. It all started one day when Billy came into the house from the field. Mom, I'm starved. When do we eat? That clock in your stomach is always fast, Billy. It's more than a half hour till dinner's ready. Haven't I always told you to watch the sun in the sky? And when it's straight over your head, then it's time to leave the field and come in for dinner. Oh, I'll bet he just got tired of working and wanted to come in. Guess what I found out in the field just now? An Indian arrowhead. No, you guess, Mom. An Indian. Ah, uh, you know the only thing around here scarcer than an Indian arrowhead is an Indian himself. Guess again. Look, son, if you want your dinner right away, I haven't got time for guessing games. You tell me. Wait till I get it out of my pocket. Got to be careful that I don't hurt it. Is it a lie? What on earth? There. A snake. A baby rattlesnake. Isn't it cute? Don't you bring that awful thing near me or I'll scream. Sissy, he's just a baby. He can't hurt you. That little snake is like a little sin. When it's little, it may not hurt you. But when it grows up, it has enough poison in it to kill you. Now you take that snake outside and kill it. Then wash your hands with soap. Ah, oh, Mom. I just want to keep him for today. I want to watch him. Just let me play with him today. Then I'll kill him. No. Do as I say, Billy. Oh, Mom. If you don't kill it, then I will. Give it here. Drop it into this bucket. No, I'll do it. I found it and I'll kill it. Give me the bucket. That's better. Can't have any fun. Guess I'm the only boy in the whole state of Nebraska that doesn't have a wagon or a bike or a gun or nothing. Can't even have a little old snake. Look, Billy, I know that you have few enough pleasures. And I wish we could afford to have more nice things. I guess it's just natural for a boy to like such things as snakes. But, son, this is a rattlesnake. They are killers. If a rattlesnake bites you, you'll die unless you can be rushed to a doctor. But we don't have a car. What would you do if you couldn't get to a doctor? Anyway, this little old snake couldn't kill anybody. He wouldn't have enough poison in him to kill an ant. But the little snake, like the little sin, grows up, and then it can kill you. Now I've got to finish dinner. You run along and do what I told you, Billy. All right. If I have to do it, I guess I have to. Well, little snake, here we are behind the barn. Mom says I've got to kill you, so... But wait, if I put you in a little box under the straw in the loft, no one will know you're there. Then when you get too big to be safe to handle, I'll kill you then. Come on, Spot, let's go find a box. Now, children, it's time for bed. Betty, you better get yourself and your doll up to bed. All right. 
come on, Billy. That means you, too. Billy will be there in a minute. You went along now, Betty. If he can stay up, I don't see why I have to go to He'll bed. He'll be along in a minute. Now, Billy, you haven't seemed like yourself today. You act like you're keeping something from me. Are you cross at me because I asked you to kill that rattlesnake? No. You did kill it, didn't you? Of course I did. I think it was for the best. It may have been harmless enough now, but in time you can get attached to something like that. And then when you keep playing with something and it doesn't offer to hurt you, you get careless. Then one day when your back is turned, it strikes. And the sting of a rattlesnake means death. Look, a sensible person doesn't see how close to a fire he can go without getting burned. He doesn't see how close to a cliff he can walk without falling over the side. Because God loves us, he warns us to keep away from sin because sin can hurt us. And because Mother loves you, I try to warn you, too, to keep away from those things that can hurt you. Do you understand? Yeah, I guess so. All right, then. No hard feelings? No. Good night, son. And don't forget to say your prayers. <laughs> the little snake grew bigger, and soon Billy had to have a bigger box to hide it in. Every day he told himself he had to kill it. But every day he put it off, for he became more and more fascinated by his deadly pet. He wasn't even afraid of it. But it never offered to hurt him, even when he picked it up and watched it coil around his arm. Only Spot and Billy knew the snake was still alive, and Spot hated that snake. Billy kept a big stone on top of the box so the snake could not get out. But one day he was careless and forgot to put the stone on top of the box. And so when he wasn't looking, the snake crawled out to look for food. He was big and he was hungry. Billy called Spot. I've got a bone for him. All right. Spot! Here's Spot! Here, boy. That's funny. I wonder where he went. Mother Billy, come quick. Spot's lying down by the barn. I think he's dead. Is he dead, Mother? Yes, he's dead, poor fellow. But, but he was all right a little while ago. Why is he so puffed up? I don't know. It looks to me like he's been bitten by a rattlesnake, but I haven't seen any around lately, have you? A rattlesnake? No. No, I haven't seen any. Well, Billy, get a shovel and dig a grave for Spot. Betty, you can help him. Oh, no, I don't want to touch him. He's my dog. I'll bury him. You go back to the house. A rattlesnake? I wonder if... No, he couldn't get out of the box. I better go and see, though. The snake! He's out of the box. Now I know he's the one that killed Spot. And if I don't kill him now, he might kill somebody else. Maybe Mom or Betty. I'll take this big stick. That ought to do it. I hope I can find him before Mother does. If she ever finds out that I disobeyed and lied to her, I'll bet he's hiding in this pile of hay. Ah, there you are. Just where I thought. Don't come crawling to me. I'm not going to feed you and pet you anymore. Now if I can just hit him over the head. Missed. I'd better get him before he gets me. If I can just get a little closer. Now. <laughs> Mother, 
I found the snake and I killed him. But before I could kill him, he bit me on the arm. He bit you? Let me see. Does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. See that little place? Quick, Betty. Get that sharp butcher knife and hold it in the fire. Why? Hold it in the fire, Betty. We have to get it hot until the germs are burned off. What are you going to do? I'll have to cut a cross over the place where the snake bit you and then put my mouth on the wound and suck out all the poison blood. Unless I do it right away, you will die. But, Mom, it doesn't even hurt. Maybe, but it will start hurting and swelling right away if we don't get that poison out. Betty, give me the knife. Now hold still, Billy, and don't try to pull away. I've got to do it. There's no other way. How do you feel, Billy? Terrible. You just lie still. You'll be all right now. But I'm sick. I feel awful. Well, that's because some of the poison got into your bloodstream. But we got most of it out in time. See, there's hardly any swelling at all. You'll be all right. Mom, I've got to tell you the truth. All of this is my fault. Do you remember that rattlesnake I brought home in my pocket that day? But you killed it. No, I didn't. I kept it in a box in the barn. You've kept that snake in the barn all this time? Yes. I kept a stone on the lid so it couldn't get out. But today I forgot about the stone. And that's how the snake got out and killed Spot. And nearly killed you, too. Now do you see why I told you to kill it when it was little? Yes. I do now. Now that it's too late. I don't know why I did it. I'll tell you why. Do you know what sin is? Sin is disobedience. You disobeyed and you lied to me. Every day that you kept that snake hidden in the box, the sin got bigger and the snake got bigger too. In fact, the Bible says that a snake is like sin. For every snake and every sin, even the little ones so-called, are full of the poison of death. On the cross, Jesus' blood flowed out to wash away the poison of sin. I know I'm a sinner. As long as I live, this scar on my arm will remind me that I am a sinner. But while you can never get rid of the scars that sin can make on your life, you can get rid of the poison if you let the blood of Jesus wash your sins away. Can I do it right now? Yes, right here. Right now.